Welcome to our panel discussion on STEM journeys. We have three guests at various stages in their individual STEM journeys, and we hope to learn from them about their inspirations and challenges that they encounter in the course of their progress. Our panelists are Anjana Susarla, Pooja Goyal, and MS Archana. Anjana Susarla is, a, is the professor of responsible AI at Ellie Broad College of Business at Michigan State University in USA. She has an undergrad degree from mechanical engineering from IIT Madras, an MBA from IIM Calcutta, and a PhD in information systems from the University of Texas at Austin. She studies algorithmic bias and responsible AI. Pooja Goel is the co-founder and CEO of Avishkar, which is a platform to support children learn next gen tech skills like robotics, AI, IoT, coding. Prior to Avishkar, Pooja worked at Adobe in USA for many, many years, where she managed the Acrobat product marketing team. She graduated from IIT Delhi and later did her MBA from INSEAD in France. Pooja recently received the Women Transforming India Award by the government of India. She invests in women-led companies and supports women founders through She EO Club, an organization she founded a few years ago. MS Archana is just beginning her career in STEM as a software engineer for Microsoft in Bangalore. She graduated from IIT Kanpur with a BTEC major in electrical engineering and minors in machine learning and computer systems. She is an alumna of Jawahar Navodhya Vidyalaya and Dakshina Scholar. She received the Ashok Jain Award for being the female topper from Dakshina. Welcome everybody to the panel. Really, really great having you here. Happy to be here, Vipasha. Thank you so much. Yeah. Glad you to be here. Dive into you know, first understanding what your personal journeys are, where did you come from, what's the context, and uh, what have been some aha moments that have led you to where you are today. Uh, so we go one by one and we put the spotlight on Anjana um, as per roll call and uh, over to you. So I'm delighted to share a little bit of my journey. So my journey as it happens, um, I grew up in a town called Kakinada which was um, at that time in, in the state of Andhra Pradesh. There were not many people from Kakinada who went to IIT. I remember maybe three or four people in my entire childhood, one of whom was my own uncle. And so uh, it was, to say the least, very unusual. And what happened was sometime in my high school, my parents decided to buy a house in a, a rural part outside Kakinada. And then suddenly life as it turned out, we had a lot of financial hardship. And I think it was the combination of, you know, suddenly I was starting my uh, 11th class. I was switching from, at that time, I studied in ICSE syllabus in a convent school till 10th class. And suddenly I was going to the state boards and math was just very different. I hated math till 10th class. It was it seemed like you're just doing a lot of cumbersome calculations. And suddenly, here I am, young person, dealing with a lot of unexpected challenges thrown by life. And uh, the town of Valsapakla was not even connected through any proper bus routes to the city of uh, Kakinada. A and I had to find myself, my family could not afford in those days, people had what were called those mopeds. It cost like five or 6,000 rupees. It was, we could not afford that money and could not afford the cost of the petrol for me to commute between. So I used to take, I used to cycle uh, about like, at least it would be half an hour one way. And sometimes I leave my bicycle in some friend's house and then walk like another 20 minutes or 30 minutes to a tuition center where I would be trying to um, learn math for uh, the state. Um, Andhra Pradesh uh, state engineering entrance exams. Mm -hmm. And so I think somehow it was this combination of some personal circumstances and the change in, in the schooling system and something about, I found myself suddenly in this, people were all competing to solve these problems. It was the state board exams were all about test of speed, but something about that made math also more fun. And I think I just enjoyed the, the peer interaction, that competition. And suddenly there's that aha moment where you're trying to solve something and then suddenly poof, you know, the proof appears and you have that 
it may be a very minor or very fleeting sense of accomplishment, but you feel like, okay, I figured it out. Mm -hmm. And I think that was my personal thing. And that was suddenly what made me realize that I was, I enjoyed doing math. And it's at the, it was at the end of my first, uh, you know, 11th standard that I said, okay, I'll study for IIT. It was probably most of my peers were already preparing for GE from ninth class or something like that. But, you know, fortunately things worked out for me and uh, I got into IIT and so on. And uh, yeah, that was, that was what launched, I think the whole, my, my whole life changed because of those circumstances. And from IIT to where you are today, what have been some milestones in your journey? Well, um, milestones in my journey after IIT, I went to IIM Calcutta because at that time, economic liberalization uh, just began in India when we were in IITs. So it looked, it seemed like suddenly it was very attractive, the world of commerce and business. And I think no doubt Pooja might say some of the same things. We went to a you know, business school thinking we'll be part of these exciting changes. And then I discovered IT consulting. Mm -hmm. The world of IT consulting was what led me to decide to do a PhD. And I came to the US mm -hmm. um, to do, uh, you know. And so when I came to the US, it was the dot-com boom at that time. A lot of people thought I was crazy to go into academia instead of, you know, going for riches in Silicon Valley. But I think it was that exciting. I was in a lot of right places at the right time. And, you know, in hindsight, well, maybe I didn't become dot-com gazillionaire or whatever, but I was, I really enjoyed very early generation. I was working on cloud computing pricing models in my dissertation. And, you know, in my undergraduate, I, I didn't think of myself as a particularly great student by any means, but I was doing my, my, um, BTEC project on computer vision, which 20 years later is like 15 years later is deep learning. A lot of deep learning comes from computer vision. So it's almost like a third or fourth career I started doing AI and responsible AI. So I think these were all milestones in my life. And I've been very fortunate to have wonderful colleagues, mentors, so many people who've been part of my journey. Anju, you are grooming future billionaires. I, I should hope. <laughs> I hope and maybe, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> and and Pooja is doing her part by encouraging entrepreneurship among the very young people. So that's that's a phenomenal thing as well. Amazing. So let's put the spotlight on Pooja. Pooja, what's your story like? What's been your journey? What are your aha moments? Would love to get to know you better. Sure, with Pasha. Um, so, you know, now when I introduce myself, I'll say, okay, I'm the co-founder of Avishkar and I'm a serial entrepreneur. This is my third startup. But when in reality you look back, it's like a case study in Brownian motion. Uh, just so many serendipitous moments. And I feel like I've done a PhD in failing because with, you know, when you are running, when you run three startups, pretty much a lot of the journeys about, oh, you're not getting this right, oh, you're not getting this right. And there might be that one moment that clicks it uh, for you or changes the trajectory. And uh, so, so that's happened to me now, you know, this is my, my third startup. Um, uh, but just going back to the early part of my journey, I came from Jaipur and nobody in my family, I'm, I'm the youngest of four sisters, nobody in my family had uh, even completed college or uh, uh, let alone a professional degree. But I, uh, you know, my sisters are very supportive. So I was always kind of the topper kind in the class, never like the top one, but top five, top six. Um, and pretty much the world was Jaipur. Um, when you ask that question of the aha moment, is trying to think it for me, it was uh, this camp, which was called the NTSC camp. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in an all-girls school called Sophia, uh, and by so there was no math in 11th and 12th. They just didn't offer it because most girls didn't take it. Most girls didn't go into engineering. If you're very good in studies, you'd go med do medicine and become a doctor. Otherwise, you'd go liberal arts, and there was this college called Maharani College there. Uh, so in 10th grade, uh, 
uh, I, um, pa I participate in something called NTSC scholarship, which is a government scheme where lifelong you get uh, to tuition from the, from the government. Mm -hmm. And it is a three step process. Uh, once I cleared the first step, the Rajasthan government used to have a camp where they used to pay us to go and attend the camp for like about a month. And that was like big money. Um, but more importantly, what happened there is that they were, for the first time, I was interacting with boys of my age and I was asking them, so what are you thinking of doing next? And pretty much like 80% of them, they all said um, IIT. And I hadn't even heard of IIT at that time. I went back home, talked to my brother and I said, what is IIT? I said, oh, that, that's, that's a really good school and... Uh, but you will need maths for it uh, and we didn't have math in our school uh, so I so you know my brother-in-law said if you really want I can support you and he was not a teacher or you know he just kind of said if you want to take it try it and and um, and, and I'll support you and I went and asked my school they said look we don't have a teacher but you can do it on your own and we'll make sure you can appear for the exam uh, in in the twelfth grade, and uh, so uh, so that was kind of the serendipitous, and I studied my brother-in-law helped, and um, and and got through IIT, and that was again one of those kind of moments. Um, but it was like okay, your rank is four eighty four, you get pigeonholed into chemical engineering, Delhi, and that's how it was, and I had no clue what I was getting in, uh, what 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 I should expect. Um, the first year I loved all the courses because they were all math, science, but chemical engineering, I was like, it's not my thing. I don't want to do my research in it. Um, and, um, and I mean, we'll talk about it a little bit, but first year when I reached there, I found everyone so smart. I thought everyone is better than me. I was convinced the JEE de department had made a mistake or given me somebody else's rank for a very long time. Uh, so I spent most of my time in IIT playing basketball and doing drums and singing. Um, and uh, yeah, now I'm familiar with that term imposter syndrome, but at that time it was like, that's it. And so, um, yeah, and coming out of IIT, then I knew I had to explore other things. So move more into strategy consulting um, with, with a company called Feedback Ventures. Um, then moved to the Bay Area where I started my first company in um, enterprise software space called Eliance. Uh, that went under uh, in the downturn of 2001. So that was the kind of first, first big failure. But, you know, pretty much I learned a lot about running a company, starting a company through that experience. Then decided to go back to INSEAD. And at that time, I was feeling like, oh, my God, my resume, what does it look like? It was really Brownian motion from here to there. And um, and then um, uh, after INSEAD, I tried to put some structure to it, joined at Palm first and then Adobe, moved back to India, started another company, and now I'm on my third. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, Pooja. Lots of questions, but uh, let's first have Archana introduce herself, her body of work before we deep dive into the questions. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm really thrilled to be here, first of all. Yeah, I am um, Archana. I, to talk a few, a few words about my background, I come from a very small village here in Karnataka in India. So uh, growing up there was, you know, my parents really dreamed about sending me to college, you know, which was not really uh, uh, what what you parents used to think about girl, you know, sending girl childs to college. So in a, growing up in a village where you know um, education open opportunities were minimal and you know thinking of a career that too for a girl was almost like a, you know impossible but my parents were you know they were they always thought out out of the box and i was the only girl child for them till uh, you know my brother uh, born very late so they were uh, looking through me 
uh, their future and you know they wanted me to stand up on my in you know on my own feet and uh, you know that's where uh, um, my parents really encouraged me to you know study hard from the very beginning and um, so and they always believed in me in fact that's the only thing that's keep that keeps pushing me even at the hardest moments even now i think yeah so then uh, i my journey towards the empowerment started you know when i was in 6th standard after i uh, passed or cleared a jawahar navodaya vidyalaya entrance test mm-hmm. after that i went to navodaya vidyalaya which is a version of a kendriya vidyalaya but it is uh, with the boarding uh, facilities and it uh, the different part of thing is you know it is completely free and you know it is a uh, kind of uh, you know 70% reserved for the kids from villages and you know it's basically targeted for talented kids from villages who couldn't get a uh, very good education and also almost no access to you know extracurricular activities or beat sports or something like that so i was exposed to all these uh, things when i joined uh, you know navodaya and that's like the first best thing that happened to me uh, that you know towards this empowerment and uh, so being in navodaya helped me in terms of uh, disciplining myself as a very young kid you know because the routines were strict and uh, and like we get to uh, explore everything starting from art to sport to you know education and it was like grooming oneself uh, you know uh, as a whole person so and uh, after the, uh, you know my 10th standard i got an opportunity to sit for uh, dakshina entrance test and i fortunately cleared that and um, i got the dakshina uh, scholarship so which was uh, again a free scholarship where to uh, you know prepare kids for je so uh, this was like you know the uh, second best thing that happened in my life so i i definitely don't know if if i could have gotten such quality education for je if uh, i would have been on my own so but um, dakshna helped me uh, to uh you know get very good je coaching and other than you know just providing the education they also help me you know motivate and groom us along the way so mm-hmm. that was my 11th and 12th basically uh, i won't say it was easy it was definitely uh not easy and uh, to be honest you know in my case uh, i won't say that like i always liked math but except uh, it it was not just one aha moment but it was like my journey with math and science was up and down like you know till 10th i was like oh i always like math and science but as soon as i entered 11th you know things got very difficult that's when oh do i really like math now <laughs> that kind of a thing and then i rediscovered myself and started to love math and uh, yeah after uh, i finished my 12th appeared for je and i got through iit kanpur and i graduated uh, uh, from iit kanpur in 2019 since then i've been working at microsoft as a software engineer beautiful beautiful uh, you know something that's common between all um, among all your stories is that a it's almost like a achievement resume based on failure resumes is everything that did not work for you that has brought you closer to where you want to be so i find that really fascinating and in all these stories especially as women ambition is what your family gives you first like whether be it in your case pooja or your brother in law said hey you know what i'm not a professor but i will figure this out for you or in your case archana where your family says hey you know i will encourage you to apply for things so it's beautiful to see how where you are is actually a series of failures and not a series of accomplishments and i think that's very very important for us to know because as there are younger kids who want to take up stem as their career it's it's what archana says right it's that aha of a dis- discovery uh, right but sometimes that discovery can get you to success some some other times it's a series of failures that gets you to that uh, so it's really fascinating before we close on this i just want to do like a very quick round um, uh, you know on what is 
an advice you would give to your younger younger self very very short answers like two three line answers uh, before we close this and we continue the conversation for a larger recording the one advice i would give to my younger self is to be to go easy on yourself i think that especially i don't know if this is a gender or personality i definitely think women we are harder on ourselves and don't don't doubt yourself is what i would say to my younger self yeah i would say um speak up what i found is when you ask for help i've not come across a single person who will say no there are people all around you willing to support you uh, but it is important to ask and it took me a long time to get to that stage where i was comfortable asking uh, for help support um, so don't hesitate uh, on that front most people are supportive willing to uh, help it's never happened that i picked up a phone and say you know can i have 10 minutes to discuss this uh, and somebody has said no i i can't do that so so go ahead speak up ask for help there's a closed door push and not every closed door is locked if you don't ask the answer is no always no yes artana yeah so in my case uh, i don't have that lot of anger self uh, scenarios but still i am i have self right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly but i would you know to myself at these moments you know i always tell to believe in myself so there are many times where i don't see an end for, you know for any given task uh you know at that moment i really start doubting myself but i should i you know i'm learning to believe in myself and to put myself through the uh whatever the task is but i you know i have always been able to come out of it glory you know uh, in glory but only thing is in in the beginning it always uh, seems dis- difficult or impossible yeah beautiful thank you so much for sharing with that uh, we wrap up with this segment of the conversation thank you so much for giving your time to us um a longer version of this conversation will be available on the website and the link will be posted below thank you so much for joining in thank you thank, thank you, you. thank you thank you vipasha